Assalamu alaikum. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I am Noor Fatiha, currently pursuing my master's study at University Science Islam Malaysia USM. I am here to present my research paper entitled, Spiritual Competence and Self-Efficacy Among Addiction Trainee Counselors in Malaysia First and foremost, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this golden opportunity. For introduction spiritual and religious aspects, are the main components to be considered by the counselor, in order to understand the issues or the problems faced by a client, there is much research showing the positive effects of religion and spirituality as coping mechanisms for people with physical or psychological illnesses, such as protection against depression and addiction, and as a source of strength in overcoming alcohol and drug abuse. Integration of spirituality in counseling began to receive serious consideration in 1995, when the Association for Spiritual Religious and Ethical Values in Counseling a cervic, held a conference that led to the development of competencies related to the ability of counselors to integrate spirituality in counseling sessions. Spiritual competence is essential for counselors to work effectively with spiritually different clients and enhance therapeutic relationships. Spiritual competence helps practitioners avoid adverse clinical interactions, access clients' spiritual strengths, and enhance clinical outcomes. Such capability implies that counselors can benefit from their higher levels of competence. Problem statement of this study. In the context of addiction counseling, spirituality has been linked to positive outcomes, which means higher levels of spirituality predict lower levels of substance abuse. Spiritual and religious aspects are recognized as one of the protective factors of drug abuse. Because of that, spirituality and religion have received increasing attention in addiction counseling and have been implemented in rehabilitation approaches for drugs addiction and substance use disorder clients. In Malaysia, a spirituality-based approach is a widely accepted method of treatment and has been practiced in Islam, Buddhism, and Christianity to treat drug addiction. However, the spirituality-based approach will not be effective without spiritually competent counselors, who are able to deal with their patients' spiritual or religious issues. This poses the risk of counselors imposing their own values, or improperly applying religious and spiritual interventions. In some ways, counselor may be in sensitivity to their client's religious and spiritual concerns, due to a lack of acknowledgement and preparation during counselor training. In addition, counselors may be considered unethical if they practice services outside the competence. Therefore, proper addiction counseling education programs will facilitate this spiritual competence for future addiction counselors either through specific subjects and training for psychospiritual approaches, or through general related subjects such as multicultural counseling. Although spiritual and religious aspects in counseling have been incorporated in their curriculums, the question arises as to whether the competency levels, knowledge, and training acquired during the programs are adequate in enabling future practitioners integrate them in their counseling sessions. Thus, there is an urgent need to investigate the level of spiritual competence among addiction trainee counselors, in addressing the needs of their clients, and to meet the demand for spiritual-oriented addiction treatment in Malaysia. In Malaysia, the field of spirituality-based addiction counseling is still relatively new, and there are very limited studies and research on the level of spiritual competence among trainee counselors, especially those in the specific area of addiction and recovery counseling. Therefore, this study will contribute towards filling the gap in this area. Research objectives There are four objectives of this study, which are, first, to measure the level of spiritual competence among addiction trainee counselors in Malaysia, second, to measure the level of self-efficacy among addiction trainee counselors, third, to identify the relationship between spiritual competence and self-efficacy among addiction trainee counselors, and lastly, to analyze any significant mean differences of spiritual competence and self-efficacy among addiction trainee counselors based on gender. The literature reviews of this study are about the spiritual competence, addiction counseling self-efficacy, and the gender differences on spiritual competency and self-efficacy. According to Lemkyle, spiritual competence can be defined as, the ability of counselors to integrate religious understanding in the counseling process, and this, in turn, is based on their own belief in their abilities or level of spiritual competence. 
The term spiritual competence, in counseling, originates from an acervic conference in 1995, that developed a set of nine competencies for integrating spirituality into counseling. Known as, the acervic spiritual competencies, which aims at helping counselors understand how to deal with spiritual and religious issues in counseling. Later in 2009, it has been revised into 14 competencies. Besides that, counseling self-efficacy can be defined as, counselors' belief in their capability to effectively conduct counseling sessions, with a specific client in the near future. Implementing counseling session effectively, means performing helping skills effectively, addressing session tasks, and dealing with challenging clients and cases. Most important for this study is the finding by Bandura that self-efficacy increases performance levels and reduces anxiety levels in counselors. In 1998, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration published a manual, Addiction Counseling Competencies, with 123 competencies. On the screen, there were several studies about the differences between male and female counselors, on their level of spiritual competence and self-efficacy. Some of these studies found significant gender differences, while some of them did not found any. For research methodology, quantitative research design was used to address the objectives of this study. It was conducted at three higher education institutions in Malaysia, that offer master's program in counseling, with specialization in substance abuse and addiction. The population size was 59 addiction trainee counselors, second year master's students, who had enrolled in more than half of the total subjects offered in the program, including practicum training or internship. The questionnaire, comprising a total of 62 items, was used to gather data for this study, this questionnaire consists of three sections, the first section is demographic data form, and the second and third sections are two instruments, the Spiritual Competency Scale SCS, which has been developed by Robertson in 2010, and Addiction Counseling Self-Efficacy Scale AXES, which has been developed by Murdoch, Wendler and Nielsen in 2005. I will explain the results and discussions of this study based on the research objectives. The first finding indicates high levels of spiritual competence, among addiction trainee counselors in Malaysia universities, with mean value 5.24 and standard deviation of 0.66. In addition, scores related to culture and worldview are higher than other subscales. It is likely that the promotion of culturally competent counseling, has facilitated higher levels of proficiency in understanding the importance of spiritual and religious integration. The multicultural Malaysian society, may have an influence on respondents' spiritual competencies, as it is part of the multicultural counseling competencies. The second descriptive analysis showed high levels of counseling self-efficacy, among addiction trainee counselors in Malaysian universities, with mean value 5.18 and standard deviation of 0.44. According to self-efficacy theories, one would expect counselors to have increased self-confidence as they acquire additional training and clinical experience. Students in practicum often have very close contact with their lecturers, and can be continuously monitored during their work with clients. However, it must be remembered that, in many cases, counseling students are completely on their own for the first time during the internship. In such cases, anxiety can increase and support decrease, which can negatively impact on self-efficacy. Furthermore, Pearson correlation analysis showed a positive relationship between spiritual competence and addiction counseling self-efficacy. Meaning that, participants with greater spirituality scores reported higher levels of perceived self-efficacy. According to Bandura 1995 modeling, encouragement, mastery experience, and positive self-beliefs all contribute to the development of self-efficacy. Spiritual practice has the potential to make individuals more mindful, positive, and connected to others. Therefore, individuals who rate themselves better in this category, tend to consider themselves as having solid counseling skills. Finally, the T-test results indicate no significant mean differences in spiritual competence and counseling self-efficacy, between male and female addiction trainee counselors. This means that gender did not affect the actual level of spiritual competence and self-efficacy among counselors. This reinforces the point that, both males and females possess personality traits that match the counseling profession. For the conclusion, I will briefly explain about the limitation, recommendation, and implication of this study. 
Limitations of the study First, the results cannot be generalized to the next or previous cohorts. Secondly, the information provided may be influenced by the respondents' understandings of the items in the questionnaire. Thirdly, there were imbalance among the participants in terms of racial, ethnic groups and religious identities. It is recommended for future study to conduct a further in-depth investigation, on trainee knowledge and awareness of the religious or spiritual concerns and backgrounds. Pre- and post-test designs also, can help to explain the impact of training, supervision, and spiritual awareness on addiction trainee counselor. Moreover, while it is important to know that spiritual competence has a positive impact on the self-efficacy of addiction trainee counselors, it would be more interesting if the factors influencing the level of spiritual competence could be investigated. The findings of this study have important implications for counselor educators, researchers, policy makers, and service providers, including government and private agencies especially in emphasizing the incorporation and integration of spiritual and or religious issues in addiction counseling. Likewise, higher education institutions should remain committed to educating all counselors, on the value of integrating spirituality into the counseling process. This brings me to the end of my presentation. That's all from me. Thank you very much for lending me your ears. Thank you.